can extend the concept of Dirac delta function to three dimensions. Okay, three dimension Dirac delta function. Okay, three dimensional Dirac delta function. Three-dimensional Dirac delta function. So, in this context, we can define this three-dimensional Dirac delta function like this. Okay, del q r. This means del of x, del of y, and del of z. Okay, similarly. Here this vector r is equal to x, x cap plus y, y cap plus z, z cap. Okay, the same position vector we we are, we are already discussed all these things like uh, in previous classes. So this is the three dimensional uh, Dirac delta function, and now you can define its Area under the curve, integration over all space, del cube R d2, such that this is equal to integration over del of x, del of y, del of z, dx, dy, dz. All the limits running from like this. Depending on the uh, ordinate system, you can write the limits. Okay. Now you can define the property. The uh, property as this time this f of r. Del Q R D two degree again over all space. This is equal to F of um, origin function value of the function at the origin zero zero zero. Okay. Similarly, if this integration is over a shifted one, that is. Or integration over all space f of r del cube r minus a b2. In this context, you can this thing as f of vector a. You can directly extend all the constants in one dimensional case to three dimensional Dirac delta function. Again, the discrepancy of divergence of r cap by r square. Okay, now you can write this function then dot r cap by r square as four pi del cube r. So if this r equal to zero, this divergence goes to zero. If this r not equal to zero. This one goes to a finite uh, value. Okay, four by del cube of r. This is actually the divergence of the r cap by r square. So to describe the divergence of r cap by r square, we can use this uh, three-dimensional Dirac delta function. Okay. If you use this um, del dot script r, this script r square, this script r is defined as r minus r prime. In this context, 
this gives you 4 pi del cube script r. Okay, 4 pi del cube script r. This script R equal to R minus R prime. We learned about this in our previous class. Okay, R minus R prime. And the gradient of this 1 by R square. Okay, gradient of this 1 by R. Gradient of this 1 by R. If you evaluate this one, you get this as minus R cap by R square. Here, your differential is over smaller. We treat this R prime as constant. Okay? R prime as constant. Differential is over smaller. Then you do this, you get here minus R cap by R square. So corresponding to this, you get the lamination of 1 by R as minus 4 script R. So remember all these things. And I think discuss about Schellhardt's theorem. In our previous classes, we learned about divergence, curl and all those things. Here, in this case, we have to check the nature of vector fields. Okay. The theorem states that any vector function or vector field is determined within an additive constant if both its divergence and its curve are specified everywhere. This theorem is called Helmholtz theorem. That means, suppose, let vector f is a vector field. Okay? Is a vector field or vector function. Either you can call it as vector function or as vector field. Okay, just like electric field or magnetic field. It is a vector field or vector function. Then, let del dot f equal to d. Del cross F equal to C. Okay. Del dot F equal to D and del cross F equal to C. From this expression itself, you know that the divergence of C should be 0. That means this means that del dot C is always 0. Because curl of divergence is always 0. Okay. This means this del cross F equal to C means this C is divergenceless. Del dot C is always uh, 0. Okay. Divergence of curl of a field is always 0. From this information itself, you can specify uniquely the vector function f using these two functions this d and c this is its divergence and this is its curve okay so using this curve and the divergence d within an additive constant you can fix this vector field f okay so that means you can uniquely find out f as using f using d and c. Okay. This is the 
peculiarity of uh, hair parcel. This is the meaning of hair parcel. So, if once we know the divergence and curl of a vector field, you can uniquely specify this vector field using the boundary conditions. In this case, in the case of electrodynamics, we assume that the field vanishes at infinity. So, along with this condition, using the boundary condition or the assumption that the field vanishes at infinity, you can uniquely specify the vector field F using the divergence D and curl C. Okay, this theorem is called Helmholtz theorem. Okay, and here there are certain uh, meanings or implications in connected with the, these theorems. We can check them uh, one by one. Okay. If the curve of a function vanishes everywhere, it is called a rotational field. We already learned about it. For example, suppose del cross f equal to 0. Okay, the curve is 0. So, this is called irrotational. Irrotational. If curve of a vector field is 0, this vector field can be written as gradient of a scalar field. Okay, that means vector F can be written as minus gradient V. Here this negative sign is put just as a convention. Okay, in this context, V is called scalar potential. Okay, V is called scalar potential. Scalar potential. So, if a field is irrotational, corresponding to which there is a scalar potential V. Okay. So, we can list out the properties here one by one. If a field is irrotational, it can be written as like this, gradient of a scalar potential. Similarly, its another meaning is line integral of a to b f dot d l is by Stokes theorem. This is by Stokes theorem depends only on n points. Okay, only on n points. This is the Stokes theorem. And the closed integral f dot dl is always 0. Okay. These are the implications of this statement. If a vector field is irrotational, it means all these things along with this. Okay. This is called theorem 1. Okay. Theorem 1. Helmholtz theorem. Now about theorem 2. Theorem 2. In this context, in the case of theorem 2, if a field is divergenceless, okay, divergence left field. Divergence less field del dot f equal to 0. If this del dot f equal to 0 means f is a function, curl of some other function. So you can write the function as a. So let vector f is equal to del cross a. This implies this f is equal to del cross a. Here a is called vector potential. Vector potential. Okay. 
divergence less field is known as solenoid solenoid okay so if a field is solenoid then it means that you can write it as a curve of a vector field and this vector field is called vector potential now you can use both divergence theorem so surface integral of this function f dot da okay this is independent of surface chosen independent of surface chosen s this is independent of surface chosen s and for any closed surface s this f dot da equal to 0 okay these are the theorem all these points have been learned in previous class just consolidate all these things here so we can conclude that helmholtz theorem states that you can uniquely specify a vector field if you know its divergence and curve and along with it some boundary condition or the conditions that the field is vanishes the field vanishes at infinity okay these are all about helmholtz theorem learn well thank you